One of the great uh, indoor track meets in the world. We've had uh, seven world records off at the Reggie over the years. There have been ten American records, and uh, we have before us now uh, four of the migrants who will be uh, running uh, tomorrow afternoon, early evening. Uh, and it's just a fabulous, fabulous uh, mile field. Last year, eight of uh, nine broke four minutes. In 2006, 11 guys went under four minutes uh, at the New Balance in their Grand Prix, and that was the most uh, ever in Indoor history. So we expect a lot out of these guys. Uh, we have Dick Willis, uh, closest to me, the silver medalist from the 2008 Olympic Games. I think opened your season with the 355 back home just recently, so Nick is showing great form already this season. Uh, we also have Galen Rupp next to him, a late entrant. Delighted that uh, Galen joined us. He's been here the last couple of years, third in 2012 at the mile in 357. He was second last year in the 3000 at 733. Been on a tear this January over at BU with American records at the two mile and the 5000 meters. And again, delighted he joined us late. And then next to him is Leo Manzano. Leo, a two-time Olympian. He was a silver medalist in 2012 in London, two-time U.S. indoor 1,500-meter champion. And on the outside, Lopez Lamont, a two-time U.S. 1,500-meter champion, a finalist in the 2012 Olympic Games 5,000, and a flag bearer from 2008 on the U.S. team. So just a, a great lineup, and uh, many others uh, in this field uh, worthy of note as well. <clears throat> Nick, uh, let's begin your closest. Tell me about the... Uh, the 355, of course, outdoors back home. How is your season tuning up? Toward what? Are you going to Poland for the World Indoors? Well, thank you for having me here. I think it's my seventh time racing at this meet. 2003 was the first time, so I feel like one of the oldest statesmen. But no, um, the year's been going really well. We had a, a really enjoyable time back in New Zealand, showing off the grandkid to to all the family back home, but had some, had some nice weather and a, a couple of good races at the end there with a 355 and a 15800. So just to show that the endurance is obviously a little bit better than the speed at that stage. But um, all of the, the world champs is, is the main goal, and uh, things seem to be tracking towards trying to get on the podium or as high as possible there. So that's that's what Ronnie and I are shooting for. And, this is a great opportunity to, to race on a, on a familiar track. I haven't been indoors for a few years now, and I've won this um, race twice before, so I'll be trying to get my third one. Uh, Galen, next up, uh, boy, what a kind of close the door in your season. It's already been a big success. Uh, congratulations on those records. But a late entrance. You were going to run at Boston University uh, tomorrow. Instead, you changed your uh, plan, and you're running here at the Reggie. We're delighted, of course, to have you. How was that decision made? Yeah, I think that, you know, obviously my initial plan was to, to go after the world record and American record in the mile, but after thinking things over and, uh, you know, talking with my coaches, I just thought that, you know, we had to kind of get back to what the ultimate goal of this indoor season was going to be. And for us, you know, it was a world indoor meet and, uh, and the U.S. Championships in Albuquerque as well. And when we took all that into consideration, I thought that, you know, the best thing to prepare me for those is that I needed to get in a competitive race and, and not just keep running by myself and, kind of these record attempts. So that was what led to the decision to run here. And uh, I'm real happy and you know, thankful that the meet uh, was able to make room for me. Uh, it's, I think it's going to be a great race. And I'm running against these guys. The competition just doesn't get any better. So I'm really looking forward to it. Beautiful. Leo, a lot of times in our sport, you see, until except for the World Championships, the Olympic Games, it's, it's hard to get everyone on the same page at the same place. Uh, where are you? So here's Nick, he's already run 355, and, and, and Galen, you know, seemingly sharp as attack. Where are you as you come into uh, the Red Sea tomorrow? Um, well, first of all, thank you for having me here. Um, it's, a, it's an honor and pleasure to be here with you guys. Uh, so I've been in Mexico for about a, about a month doing altitude training, and uh, just last week I had a time trial in a 220.9. Uh, so I think I'm, I'm in a pretty good place right now in my training, and I'm really excited to be coming here and, and racing these guys. And uh, this is going to be my first race uh, this year, and my first race in about a year in indoor track. So I'm, I'm excited to see what I can do. A big test. And, and Lopez, uh, how do you find yourself coming in, into this race? And what's your goal, uh, and what's your ultimate goal for this indoor season? Um, again, uh, thank you for having me here in this fantastic place. And, um, I think myself is, uh, you know, I'm just going to go out there and, and run with these guys. And uh, so I opened my indoor season a little bit in Albuquerque. I ran four minutes there. And um, so 
so like about 10 days ago. So um, I think I'm, I'm in a pretty, pretty good position right now to, uh, to go out there and be competitive. Again, uh, it's a great deal. Um, it's going to be good times, and it's going to go out and put myself in a great position to run uh, a mile. So um, I'll tell myself I'm doing 5,000 meter right now, not too short. Uh, to, to run, you know, but I would like to go and uh, get, a, get a good one and end it before the uh, USA Championship and on the big one championship. So let me open it up to the floor. Uh, questions on the floor? David. Hey, Galen, how are you? Uh, you're a 10,000 meter runner, but very gifted at the mile. Uh, what's the sensation for you? What does it feel like to be on the track with that incredible turnover? Yeah. And what is it? How do you feel about being in this race against such a strong group where it's going to be elbow to elbow, shoulder to shoulder, top speed? Well, as far as the competition, I mean, that was the whole reason I wanted to run here was to, to run against these guys and, and really see how I stack up against them. You know, we've got two silver medalists here. Lopez, obviously, has uh, won several U.S. championships. So, you know, again, the competition really doesn't get any better. Um, and I'm really looking forward to, to seeing how I stack up against them. You know, it's going to definitely be a challenge and a hard race, but. I think that uh, this is what I need to do, you know, to, to, for my preparation for, for Albuquerque and, uh, and hopefully the World Championships as well. So that was that was the whole reason of coming here. And you know, as far as being a 10,000 meter runner, you know, I don't think that just because you, your focus might be on the longer distances, is that's any reason not to be able to run a mile well, run 800 well. Um, that's always been our philosophy. Is that you know the reality is that these. World Championship Olympic level meets, you gotta be able to run pretty fast the last mile, you gotta be able to kick, and so speed has always been something that we've always put a, a big emphasis on, and you know, some other guys might not run it, but I think that a lot of other the top distance runners, you know, if you put them, you know, 5K, 10K guys, look at what Mo did last summer in the 1500, I mean, it's a, there's no reason why you can't run fast a mile, you know, our training is all geared towards being able to kick at the end of races, and you know, the indoor season just gives us, I think, a great opportunity to, to practice that and challenge ourselves in those shorter distances. Ron Warhurst for a long time. A as an athlete develops, do you see us still as a coach-athlete relationship, as an advisor relationship with an athlete? How do you explain it? I guess different seasons and different times, um, our relationship is, um, is different to, in terms of who sets the workouts or who plans out the weeks. but. Even when I'm on the other side of the world, I'm so excited to do a good workout so I can call him up and hear how excited he can be. Um, but really everything that I come up with is stuff that he helped teach me. Um, I've been with him, I think this is my 14th year now, so I didn't really know much about running before that. Um, although I like to think that I make up a, a huge percent in my schedule, it's all stuff that he's taught me and then I'll bounce it off of him and make sure it's all right. But this day, um, this time now, it's about twice a week we get together for workouts that he will pretty much say what we're going to do, but that he trusts that I'll know how far I should do on all my other days, and he just asks me how my mind is going as opposed to what I should be doing those other days. And people who know me, I, I prefer that flexibility. i got a kid, I've got a family, I've got other stuff in my life, which I take priority over my running, um, so I can fit my running into my life as opposed to my life around my running. Thank you. One of the things, like... Nick just said he's with Ron for 14 years. Galen was for 14 years or so with Beth Alberto as well. It's been a long time. It, it's such a fine line between getting yourself in top form without going over that edge. I mean, that, that's really the game, I think, at your guys' level. I mean, the most you can do without compromising yourself. How, how do you play that? How, on a day-to-day -day basis, week-to-week -week basis, month-to-month? -month, how, how do you schedule that out to try to push yourself just enough where you can compete at the highest levels without breaking that? Well, I, I definitely think that one of the things that I like to do is I, I like to keep everything fresh. Uh, so, for example, I like to kind of, uh, I like to get away and just and just focus on my training. Of course, you have to look at your schedule and kind of see what races you're going to do, and so that way you can prep the way you need to prep and, and fit your workouts in, in correctly. Uh, so, so that way um, you're not either you, a you're not burnt out or, or b you're not overtrained. Um, so, for example, I was in Mexico for for a month. And uh, at the beginning, I was doing a lot of base work, and then towards the end, um, I started doing a lot of, uh, of sharpening up work. So. You've been a 1500 meter man, you were looking finals at 5,000 meters. Which race do you prefer, and what's your goal this year? Um, yeah, uh, I think my coach and I, we kind of talk about um, 
that we put everything on, on the table that uh, we are more focusing on the 5,000 this year. And um, and also, like, you know, it's to jump into the 1,500, kind of like sharpen up a little bit. But, uh, you know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not getting younger, <laughs> I'm getting older. And uh, I just, I think 5,000 will be a little better for me to, uh, because I got like, a little strength. And we're just going to go out and, and try to sharpen up as much as we can and add up a little bit of mileage in, in a week, you know, by five or ten miles. And, you know, hopefully run, you know, be running about nine miles a week and see how I can be able to do it in the, in the world stage and maybe break down a little bit uh, my PRs and stuff. So, yeah, 5,000 is, is the ultimate goal. Yeah, now of course.